Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes are headed into the last two races as a duo, and obviously the emotions will run high. However, the last race in Abu Dhabi is not going to be the last obligation that Hamilton will have for Mercedes. The team has decided not to let him go earlier to Ferrari and do the tyre test that was the case with Gasly and Piastri when they came to their new squads. But with the latest development of events, can this prove to be the reason why Hamilton's relationship with Mercedes will get even sourer? And if so, will this be a greater motivation for him to prove that the team did wrong by not trusting his feedback? One of the most emotional races is bound to happen on the 8th of December in Abu Dhabi where Hamilton will drive his last race for the team with which he won six championships and was stripped of the seventh and his total eighth in 2021 at the last lap. Be that as it may, every chapter comes to an end and while we all thought he would be hopping in the Ferrari for the tyre test right away from Abu Dhabi, the situation is not precisely going to happen as that. While Ferrari has let Science do his tyre testing duties with Williams, the same cannot be said for Hamilton and Mercedes. And when talking about it, Wolf explained why the team is not letting go of the seven-time world champion sooner than expected. Further adding, Fred didn't ask. I think it's a difference also if you're maybe going to Williams, but we have contractual agreements with sponsors. We are having a farewell for Lewis. We are having lots of activities that are planned. And him and I, we spoke about it shortly, and he said, I guess that is not going to work. I don't think it's going to work. And that was the whole thing. So I don't think Fred is particularly sad. Furthermore, Wolf went on to say that the situation between him and Hamilton won't change because the comments he made about the shelf life of the seven-time world champion have been taken in the wrong context. And the fact that Hamilton has gone on to do such an amazing recovery race in Vegas has proven exactly that. And it's obvious that Hamilton cannot go away from Mercedes just like that. The long-lasted tenure has left some marks between their partners that they have to fulfill right now. And whether Hamilton likes that or not, the situation stands as it is. This might hurt him a little bit in the adaptation process, but according to Vasseur, it's not going to take tons of time for the Brit to accommodate the machinery he will be driving, as the team has already planned a test with the F175. This is the car that was used by Ferrari in the 2022 season under the leadership of Bonotto and, quite frankly, before the upgrades ruined the potential of it in the beginning of the season, it did look like Leclerc could be a legitimate contender in the championship. Now Hamilton will try to extract as much potential as possible from the car and Vasseur has talked about this test and how much of an influence it will have in the acclimatisation process of the Brit. Furthermore, the team principal of Ferrari said, I am not sure that Hamilton needs tons of hours of acclimatization. He is experienced enough to be quick on the first day, or at least very soon. We will have one or two tests of previous cars, plus the test in Bahrain, and that will be enough. For sure, we have part of the team already focused on 2025, on the test plan, on the communication, and so on. With Lewis being part of this, but when it comes to the race team, it's not on my mind. It's going to be quite interesting to see how the situation will develop between Hamilton and Leclerc because after the Las Vegas GP, the Monegasque driver has sent a chilling message to his race engineer and the entire team. From now on, I am only thinking about myself. This means that even for 2025, Leclerc's priority will be his championship quest in the driver's category and not the team's priorities, like they are right now, as they are trailing McLaren by 24 points in the Constructors' Championship. Elaborating on the 2025 hopes for the team, Leclerc was adamant that the chances of competing at the top are very high, and he is quite optimistic that Ferrari will be the next world champion, further stating, It's all about us, how well we are working as a team, and the job we are doing as a team to get to the world championship. I feel like we are working well. However, it's a relative sport and it all depends on how well the others are doing too. And they are doing super well for now. So, we've got a lot of hard work to do in the next few years, but I believe in the project. I have to believe in the project 100% and I am sure that Ferrari is the next team that will be world champion. We've just got to keep working, but be that as it may, 
Leclerc is going to have one of the greatest drivers in the history of the sport as his teammate from 2025 onwards, and that is going to pile up a lot of pressure on him to deliver the best performance possible. Now that he is struggling to do so against Sainz, don't get me wrong, he obliterated him throughout the season. My point is, he is struggling to make his point against Sainz, and the team orders that the Spaniard doesn't respect. The situation is not going to be any easier when Hamilton comes at the Maranello team. This is a man who is coming on a quest, and as Vasseur said, the seven-time world champion is not coming to Ferrari to retire, but to win races and to potentially win the championship if the circumstances allow it. However, Hamilton hasn't really thought about the legacy he is leaving in the sport. And while being arguably one of the most influential figures in Formula One when talking about this manner, he went on to say, I get asked about legacy a lot, but honestly, I don't really think about that. I've tried to hold the brand to the highest level throughout the years, and everything that I do hopefully has reflected the brand. I hope that in 10 or 20 years, they look back and say, maybe he moved the needle a little bit. To enable people from all shapes and sizes, all different backgrounds, religions and genders, to get into sport where they perhaps wouldn't have been able to do before. Still, the questions about Hamilton being sabotaged by his own team have dealt a lot of damage to the reputation of Mercedes, and the fact that the seven-time world champion finished second in Vegas and being arguably the fastest driver there went on to show that there was so much left for him had he started a bit ahead on the grid, which is something we cannot predict in hindsight. Hamilton himself said that he would have definitely won the race if he wasn't starting from the 10th position, and Allison believed that the best result for the seven-time world champion would have been something around 5th and 6th. But with his amazing recovery drive and finishing P2, Hamilton has shown the world what he is made of. Now, the hopes are that he can build on this momentum and go to Qatar in the best possible race mood because the circumstances, while being polar opposite of what we experienced in Vegas, are something that Wolf believes will suit the car much better than what we're expecting. Elaborating on this situation and the expectations of the team ahead of the Lucille circuit, the team principal of Mercedes said, The races in Vegas and Qatar couldn't be more different. The Lucille International Circuit has many high-speed sections and few, if any, big braking zones. Despite going there later than last year, it will still be very warm. That is in contrast to the cool conditions and many slow speed sections of Las Vegas. Nevertheless, we're aiming for another strong showing this weekend. The W15 has looked more at home at circuits with lots of high speed corners such as Silverstone or Spa. All in all, the situation has changed a bit to the positive side for Mercedes and it looks like the team can end the tenure with Hamilton on a positive note despite the shelf life comments from Wolf, ones he believes were taken out of context massively. However, the future doesn't look that certain for anyone out there, including the showing of Antonelli as well, who is yet to prove that he can be the next Verstappen or the next world champion if given the right machinery. Mercedes is dubbed to be one of the favourites when the new era kicks in due to their supremacy in the engine and battery production. But even with a situation like this, they are likely going to find it hard to fight against the top teams like Ferrari, McLaren and maybe even Aston Martin, who are turning a fresh page in their books and are starting everything from scratch. With all this in mind, do you think that Mercedes's decision to not allow Hamilton to do the tyre test with Ferrari is a legitimate one? And if not, how do you think the seven-time world champion should respond to this? Let us know in the comments below. And if you are interested in the potential comeback of Ricciardo and Vettel with Andretti, make sure to click on the video that appears on your screen right now.